Now this, now, as of 2022, is my top 10 for life. Niche indie fragrances that I will have in my collection. Will that change? Yes, we're fickle. But for now, you're looking for a top 10 that I think are going to be in my collection for life. That's a bit of a contradiction, isn't it? Well, anyway, keep watching. Hi, I'm Gabby and welcome back to another edition of The Fragrantition. And yes, I am extra because I'm fanning myself. Because I get hot nowadays. I mean, I'm always hot, but... You know the Today's school. edition. So in today's edition, we are talking about my top 10 niche and indie fragrance designers for life. That I think... I'm, well, I'm loving, I wear them. I wear them every day. I wear them constantly. So let's just get into it. The first one, let's just go straight into Amouage, which has been my, oh, I love Amouage. And we're gonna go with Portrayal. Yes, Portrayal. It is one of those fragrances that is a Smoky Jasmine. Oh, yes. You know when you get a eureka moment when you smell something? Yes. Oh, wow. This in the air is just, oh, dramatic. I mean, these fragrances are pretty dramatic. And they have to be in my collection, in, in, in my collection of fragrances. So, yes, Amouage Portrayal. You want to feel like a 1920s, 30s flapper girl? You want to have that jazz club thing going on? Portrayal. You'll be the talk of the town. I'm going to whiz through these quite quickly because, let's face it, I'm not one to just blabber on and blabber on about things. It's just not in my nature. I'm to the point. So the next one I'm talking about, again from Amouage, is Memoir, which is very, very different to Portrayal. It is an animalic sheepra. On oh, my skin, I don't know why, but the last year I have been loving animalic fragrances. But this isn't too animalic. It is a modern interpretation of an animalic sheepra, of a floral sheepra. And it is dark and gothic and brooding, and it's the magenta of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. A little bit mischievous as well. Strong to the max. Want to make a memory? Amouage, memoir, will make that memory. Now the next one, let's go to the house of Papillon and it is Salome, of course, which will always be there. It is Jasmine Carnation Turkish Rose, a complete animalic musk as well. And it's a scent, what I call, that just screams vintage and screams modern day as well. And Liz Moore's created magic. You did, Liz Moore's. Give yourself a pat on the back. And don't let anybody tell you, Liz, that you can't do something because you can. Because Liz is a cancer. I know Liz is a cancer. So the cancer signs, you know, emotion, they're emotion. It's in their nature but they're at one with the earth as well as the sea. And anyway, I'm digressing now. But Salome is that scent that will get everybody's hearts racing. Not all for the right reasons, but it does for the me. The next one again by the House of Papillon is Angelique, which is completely different to Salome. It's dusty and it's powdery and soft and green and vintage and it reminds me of a mixture of fairies dancing in a forest and it's what I also call my Edwardian fragrance. It's a fragrance for 1910 
just think, just before people were boarding that Titanic, they were wearing this. But this is, this is what conjures up in my mind. It is my Jane Seymour and Christopher Reeve scent from Somewhere in Time. And it is a Somewhere in Time scent. It's a time capsule. It transports me back to a previous life. That's the only way I can describe it. It transports me back to a life where I am looking out the window and World War One is just about to approach and I am fearful yet optimistic about life. This is what this scent gives to me. It's quite a deep thought there. Anyway, Angelique by Papillon. I love it. Now, I was going to include another Papillon scent, but that's going to be for another video. Yeah, so watch this space. So the next one we're going to talk about is from the house of Andy Tower and it is L'Air du Désert Marocain. Yes, babies. It is aromatic and spicy. I will say I don't like the spray on this. That's one thing that lets the scent down. However, when you smell it, you'll think you're walking somewhere in the Middle East. Just up those spice markets as you're walking through them. And then it transports you to what I call an Arabian night and you feel like Jasmine from Aladdin. If you want to feel like Jasmine from Aladdin, this will transport you to that kind of heavenly experience. It's aromatic. It's slightly resinous, slightly floral, ever so slightly floral, but not too, too slightly, but not too much. It, it's resinous and it's, it's quite spicy as well. However, it has like a fougere element to it as well. So it has like a fresh, little bit of a barbershop element to it but it's slightly slightly sweet as well it's a very complex fragrance very complex um when you smell this you think oh that could be an amouage that's the type of complexity this fragrance i feel has so yes i absolutely adore it it's a compliment getter i've had compliments from wearing this Lovely sillage, beautiful sillage. Andy Tower, L'Air du Désert, Marocain. Next, we are going to the house of Frédéric Mal and Carnal Flower, which, I mean, I have made a bit of a dent in this, but it's one not to overspray. It is tuberose, melon, coconut, a little bit of jasmine, but it's predominantly a waxy, chewy tuberose green scent with all the facets of the tuberose. I've spoken about this a lot and it's still my number one tuberose, still to date. I tried Fracker, came nowhere near to carnal flower in my opinion. So don't come for me, please don't come for me. But carnal flower is the queen of tuberose, the queen. Next, the queen of the rose herself. And again, you know me, this has got a theme, this is, I like scents that are brooding and dark and deep and gothic, so it has to be portrait of a lady. In my opinion, the best rose, because it's mixed with a bit of clove and it's mixed with a bit of raspberry and it's mixed with, a, with patchouli. It's aromatic. It has a slight spiciness, but that rose is a rose that is I call a vampire rose. It's a gothic rose. It is not for the faint of heart. It's strong. This is a pre-reformulated version I have and I plan on getting either the hairspray or the body butter to match. I think the body butter to match this will be beautiful. And it has a bit of sweetness from the raspberry, a bit of tartness as well. It's slightly sharp but I think the patchouli adds a little bit of complexity to it as well. It's quite earthy and the rose, those roses are wilting. They're not the fresh cut green roses. They are the roses that are slightly 
ever so decaying. Portrait of a lady in a Gothic cathedral that is starting to crumble. That's how I love this fragrance. Now the next one by Francesca Bianchi is my Prima Ballerina, my Black Swan. It is Angel's Dust. And this has black pepper combined with iris and rose and vanilla and benzoin. And it is dusty. It's makeup boudoir -y. It's can-can dancers. It's... The Folie Bergère takes me back to the Parisian days of a dancer, takes me backstage, a showgirl in a bottle, angel's dust. It's, it's a symphony of notes and I love it and I don't care if people do knock, because some people do knock the house of Francesca Bianchi. I've seen reviews and that's fine. It's subjective. Fragrance is subjective. But to me, Angel's Dust has a boudoir effect. But it's not too dusty and musty. I feel there's a complete perfect balance of that black pepper, of that rose and that vanilla. And the iris in there, the oris, the iris, the oris in there. Beautiful. Angel's Dust. The next one by Francesca Bianchi, which I absolutely adore and I will always have, is Sex and the Sea, the Neroli edition. Because it's, it's minus the, the coconut and the pineapple, but it's still got the animalic notes combined with the Neroli, which is that freshness. I feel it is a summer scent, whereas Sex and the Sea is an all year scent and I don't have that yet. That is next on my list. Sex and the Sea is next on my list to possess. However, Sex and the Sea Neroli is in the top 10 for life. Strong. Oh, I love the spray on this. Made with... Oh, it's joyful yet it's slightly daring. It's sweet yet it's sharp it's a contradiction and it's a juxtapose of all these different notes that i feel are blended superfluously and effortless effortlessly sex and the sea the neroli edition now i had to do, choose an an an, uh, well, an honorary mention which is in my last one so it is a cheating it's 10 plus an honorary mention number 10 in this list is fils de joie by serge Lutens. it is a gothic vampire jasmine whereas portrait of a lady is a gothic vampire rose this is gothic vampire jasmine this is mina from dracula wearing this this is brooding but she is sweet and innocent and she's waiting to be devoured this is feast de joie it's sweetened with the honey and it's that night blooming jasmine at night when frank langella from that 1979 film is coming down and just about to feast and gorge on jan francis who plays mina or was it lucy Mina, Mina, in Dracula. Yes, you want to be that girl or that guy? Then, Fils de Joie by Serge Lutens. It is a bomb, a killer, Jasmine. Killer, killer, Jasmine and honey. Also, I will say, it's beautifully balanced as well. The Jasmine and the honey is balanced. That's why I love it. Because honey can go quite wrong on my skin. Not with this baby though, not with this. And finally, the honorary mention goes to Serge Luton's Fleur d'Oranger, Fleur d'Oranger, because it's my happy-go-lucky orange blossom scent that is backed up with a bit of hibiscus, rose and cumin and musk. And it's stunning. It's like, love it love it for me it's a it's what portrait of a lady is a brooding 
rose and Fils de Joie is a brooding jasmine. This is a bit of a brooding orange blossom, but it's slightly pretty. I think it's the Lucy in that Dracula. It's the one that's waiting after Mina has been gorged. She is the one that Dracula has his eyes on and he wants to devour. And he does eventually, but she is this one that I think suits her. And the orange blossom in this is pretty. It's it is sweet and playful, but the cumin adds a little bit of backbone to it. And But it's not body odorish, but it's still teetering on, slightly, ever so slightly disturbing, but not. It still retains that pretty, youthful, playful scent that I love about it. And the citrus notes in this adds it some sweetness that because it just says citrus notes, so I'm assuming it's like lemon and lime when you first spray it. It it bounces off the skin and it glides in the air and I love it. So, what are your 10 fragrances that you, you think you're going to keep in your collection forever for life? Your niche, your indie fragrances? Comment down below. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.